and good morning everybody hope everybody's well welcome back to the show happy wednesday for those that celebrated happy new year happy jewish new year chag sameach shana tova this episode is dedicated to Ilud Nishmas Zilpa Basakiva, who taught us by example that one needs courage to truly live. I thought to myself that what we should really talk about just for the next few days, sort of like take a break from our scheduled programming, and talk a little bit about the days that we're in. Again, it doesn't matter your background, right? These are days that have massive implications for our minds in our lives. And so when you think about coming out of a world of Rosh Hashanah and going into a world of Yom Kippur, it has major implications for just how you conduct your life. And there's so many lessons. So I want to share one. Share what where we were and share where we're going. In order to engage in a process of repentance, in a process of return. The Hebrew word is tshuva. We approach these things with a little bit of trepidation. These are holidays that many people are, they're connected to physically, but not emotionally. They worry people, it's un- they're uncomfortable. You have to mention things that you did wrong, you have to apologize. There's a concept of judgment that hangs in the world. But if you get down to it, the prerequisite for a day like a Yom Kippur that's coming up is really the understanding that you are not meant to be perfect. Right? If you were meant to be perfect, God wouldn't have put into the day holidays built on making you clean. Like in the Torah, there's a holiday called Yom Kippur. And the essence of that holiday is cleaning, forgiving, making amends. That would never have been there if there wasn't an assumption that the people that are involved will ab- absolutely need it. And so when you go through this period of time, if you go through this period of time as I'm supposed to be perfect and there's something wrong with me, this is going to be a period of time that's going to be really daunting. If you go through this period of time with I'm defensive when I'm not right, I'm defensive if you don't think I'm perfect, this is going to be a big problem. When you're engaged in a period of time that is meant to forgive, to clean, to grow, to revise. The approach to that period of time needs to be, one, I am not perfect by design. And two, I am not defensive with what I've done. I just want to get better. If you go in with that mentality of, I know I'm not all there and I want to be all there. I know I'm not perfect, but I want to get closer to perfection. Then you enter into a period of time in which discussing things you've done wrong, in which grappling with things that you are not, in which asking for forgiveness for that which you've done is actually liberating. You have a chance. You 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 can get you can you can clean it out. You can fix it. You can make it better. You can grow. And what happens during this period of time that it actually makes us need to grapple with these core fundamental problems that we have, which is this desire to appear or be perfect, and this defensiveness when we're wrong. And those are the two areas that if you're, if you're holding on to these cognitions, you're going to have a really hard time, or you're not even doing it anymore. Because maybe you don't want in, or maybe your ancestors had that feeling, and they, or maybe they just didn't know. But a period of time that is designed by the creator of humanity to give you a second chance 
to clean out things that you've done wrong, to fix things that are broken spiritually. It's the greatest gift in the world. In fact, the rabbis speak about Yom Kippur is one of the happiest, the, 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 the biggest, joyous days of the year because they got it. Well, who wouldn't want that? Right? If I would tell you that there's a, that there's a, a monastery in India or if you went there, they have some special treatment in which they could rub an oil on you and all of your fat would dissolve. It's a plane ticket and a few bucks and all your diet. All your dieting is one minute. You just rub an oil and all the fat dissolves. Would we not line around the block? Why? Because we know we're not perfect in our bodies and we're not defensive. Maybe. About how we look. Give me the oil. But when it comes to interpersonal things, when it comes to things that I've done right and wrong, my priorities, people maybe that I've hurt, potential that I haven't been able to utilize because of my own issues, are we as non-defensive? And that's this period of time. We are entering into it. We are entering into it now. And in order to enter into something, you have to have the right headspace. If you ever watch football, you know that the amount of time that they psych each other out is insane. Like it's if you think about it, it's like it's it's like weird almost. They're constantly psyching themselves up. I mean, you have players who are professionals who get paid lots of money, who honestly have done nothing else in their lives. If you're playing in the NFL, you probably started playing football when you were four. And if you're in the NFL, you probably play football every day, every day since then. You, you, you don't know anything but football. And you're playing in a game. Why in the world is there like a pump-up speech in the locker room, followed by another speech at the, at, the, at the gate, followed by another one at the sidelines, followed by a dozen more throughout the game, and then in between, coaches are like, come on, guys, come on, guys, and then players are going into the sidelines and pumping... Is a, and then the huddle is a constant. Why? You, you can't just get on the. You can't just get on the field and play. You can't just like roll in, put on your suit, be a professional, show up and kill it. You think the surgeons are out there like pumping each other up? You think the teachers roll into the teachers' room and they they put their hands in go team? Like you can't just do your job. It's because sports understands the human psychology almost better than anybody else. Because it's, it's a human-dominated game at the highest level. And they know, and they get it. It's about the mentality. And you're up against really big people that are very athletic. You're constantly facing a, an enemy in battle. And if you're not at your, at your game mentally, you're going to get rolled over. Because your mental game has to be strong. The frame in which you walk into something is going to matter. The frame in which we enter into a period of time, a time called the 10 days of repentance, regardless of your background, this is a period of time happening in the world. Jump in. Really, jump in. We're entering into a period of time in which if we are defensive or if we're trying to be perfect, we're going to miss it. We're going to go back to our lives. There's a car wash going on. This is the spiritual oil that you put on your soul and it cleans it. All the fat we've put on throughout the year and sins are getting cleaned out. All you do is get in the game. I will talk about this. All right, everybody. Have a great day with God's help. Can't wait to see you again tomorrow.